When we think of the future, I believe that most of us uh, think of it as being something that's far away. But the future is tomorrow. As a matter of fact, it's the next hour. The future is the next five minutes. And most people don't know how to live the future because the greatest threat to your future is your past. And most of the humanity that I have known and gotten to, to see over the years, uh, there are 5.7 billion people on the planet right now. And I would dare say that 90% of those people that live on this planet right now are people who are experiencing destruction and personal perishing. They are perishing personally. They are, they are not being successful. Do you know why? Because instead of living according to a vision, they're living according to a revision. Now what is a revision? When you're going to do a revision, it means you go back and look at something you've already done. And do you know that when you revise a revision, you're basically living something that's already lived? When I was in college, one of the things that they taught us to do is uh, to study, to take tests. I think all of you have had that opportunity. And uh, when you prepare to take a test, what do you study? Things you should have already learned. And you kind of read notes or you read books or you go over different uh, types of information that you're supposed to have learned already. So revisions really are living the past again. And most of the human entities on this planet are actually living their past because they're so preoccupied with revision they don't live their vision. Now what does the Bible say? You know, one of the, the wisest men that ever lived was a, was a politician, his name was Solomon. And Solomon says, without a vision, you will perish. But I believe that most of the people on the planet are living their revision. Some are so busy remembering, they cannot forget. Now you think about that with your life. There is a, a dream in your heart, and everyone has one, that is much bigger than the nightmare you're experiencing. <laughs> Most people are so trapped by what they used to do, they have no energy to do what they should do. Most of the people I know are so afraid of past failures that they never attempt future possibilities. And I'm talking about 99% of the planet. How sad. It seems that people are so busy keeping in touch with their past that they never visit their future. The reason for that is because most of us live the unknown from the known. Now this is good and it's bad. You can only learn what you know. You can only know what you learn. And most of us live our lives based on what we did. Think about it. So the unknown is usually lived out of the known. And that is very dangerous because what you know should not limit what you could know. Memory immobilizes man. Make a note of that. Memory immobilizes man. Most of the people in this room, and it might be you as one of them, you are trapped by what you have already done. And it makes you question what you could do. That's why the majority of the people on this planet never live their future. Because the past to them is more important than their future. They are so preoccupied with what they've done that they never plan to do what they could. I believe that the greatest uh, enemy of your progress is actually your last success. Even the good things you do could prevent you from doing the greater things that you could do. That's why when people accomplish great things, they park in that parking place. They become so trapped by their success that they refuse to move on to what they could do that they haven't done yet.
The past is dangerous. One of the greatest decisions that a human can make is to actually forget. God gave you the capacity to forget. God gave you the ability to literally turn things off. Now I must confess that it's impossible to not have a memory. But it is possible to not allow your memory to influence you. It's possible for you to not allow what you did to interfere with what you could. The wealthiest spot on this planet is not the oil fields of Iraq or Saudi Arabia. Neither is it the gold and diamond mines of South Africa, the uranium mines of the Soviet Union, or the silver mines of Africa. Though it may surprise you, the richest deposits on our planet lie just a few blocks from your house. They rest in your local cemetery or graveyard, buried beneath the soil within the walls of those sacred grounds are dreams that never came to pass, songs that were never sung, books that were never written, paintings that never filled a canvas, ideas that were never shared, visions that never became reality, inventions that were never designed, plans that never went beyond the drawing board of the mind, and purposes that were never fulfilled. Our graveyards are filled with potential that remained potential. As I walk the streets of our cities, my heart frequently weeps as I encounter and observe the wasted, broken, disoriented lives of individuals who, years before, were talented, intelligent, aspiring high school classmates. During their youth they had dreams, desires, plans, and aspirations. Today they are lost in a maze of substance abuse, alcoholism, purposelessness, and poorly chosen friends. Their lives are aimless, their decisions haphazard. This enormous tragedy saddens me. What could have been has become what should have been. The wealth of dreams has been dashed into the poverty of discouragement. So don't allow your memory to immobilize your life. You see, you can leave the past, you can actually cancel the emotional debt and the psychological ties that you have to the past. And you can advance to the future if you are willing to make that decision to forget. To live effectively then, I am convinced that it is impossible for you to succeed until the future becomes more important than your past. You must move past your past to enter your future. That's why I want to talk about this today because ever since the fall of man, we've been trapped by what we've done and it's stopping us from doing what we could do. You know, one of the greatest gifts that God has that he told us about, one of the greatest attributes of God, one of the greatest miracles of God himself is that God forgets. The Word of God makes some very plain statements about God's attitude toward your past. And one of the greatest things it says about your past in relationship to God is that He forgets your past. He takes your sin. Now what is your sin? Your sin is your past life, your past behavior. It includes that which was done through Adam. You know, your past goes back as far as Adam. Because according to biblical, theological concept, Adam had all of us in him when he disobeyed God. So therefore, it was passed upon every sperm that was in Adam. And every future generation was trapped by Adam when Adam sinned, which means that our past began in Adam. And when God forgave the sin of Adam, your past was eradicated. So when you come to Christ in this hour in your life, you actually appropriate something that was already taken care of years ago. Uh, some years ago, I was studying the, the Bible, which to me is the most important book on the planet. And I read something that I really didn't understand for years. I read that Jesus took care of the sin problem before man sinned. I found that in a strange place in Revelation. 
it says that Jesus was slain before the earth was even founded. Which means God made arrangements to solve your problems before you had any. God made arrangements to deal with your past because he loved your futures too much. God has some things he wants you to do that he won't allow what you did to interfere with. That's why what you did is never more important than what you could do. Isn't that good news? You better clap at that one. I mean, God is so good that God's dreams for you are so important that God made arrangements for your past so that your future could still be possible even if you messed up in the past. That means God planned my past before my future so that my past will not interfere with my future. So when we come to Christ and he forgives us, we are cashing in on something that's already done. And that is why forgiveness is not something that God just decided to do. He forgave you while you were yet a sinner. Jesus died for you while you were yet a sinner. So you are not a haphazard second thought of God. He always had plans for you to be successful. Therefore, if you fail, it's because you decided not to succeed. God hates to see you fail. He made arrangements for you never to fail. That's why anything that happens to your life that is not God's best for you is a temporary detour. To me, that excites me. That's why I love the word forget. Everybody say forget. Tell your neighbor, forget it. Come on, just say it with some feeling. Say, forget it. Can you take him, hit him with your shoulder, say, forget it. Now, of course, they are trying to figure out what you're talking about, right? They're trying to figure out, what do you mean by forget? Forget what? Well, forget whatever it is that's stopping you from moving ahead to what you're supposed to do. Forgetting is important to your future. Philippians chapter 3 was written by a serial killer. Now, I got to talk to you about this guy because this guy is a very interesting guy. This guy, whose name we know as Saul, he killed so many people indirectly that we don't know the number of people he killed. He's a serial killer. And one of his zealous commitment was to kill as many more people as possible. And this serial killer had a reputation. His reputation was so horrible that even when he had a change in life, the people still didn't trust him. They actually interpreted his future from his past. And one day, he was on his way to kill some more people. And on his way, he was on a horse with a few of his men, and he was about to go and destroy another group of people, and he was interfered with by God. And God knocks this guy off his horse, and shines a light in his face and God says to him uh, what are you doing? why are you attacking me? and the guy says who are you? isn't it amazing? most people don't know who God is Paul says who are you? he says I am Jesus whom you persecute and of course Jesus introduced himself to Paul and introduced Paul to his purpose and he says Paul you were created to be a witness and an apostle to the very people that you are hating. You are supposed to be a leader of one of the groups that you're destroying. And then his eyes were opened. Now, what did God see in this murderer? What did God see in this serial killer? Do you know what he saw? He saw three quarters of the New Testament in a serial killer. I wonder what he sees in you. God looks at this guy who is responsible for destroying people's lives and God sees in him three quarters of the New Testament scriptures. This serial killer wrote the book of First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Thessalonians. This guy was walking around with all those scriptures in him and didn't know it. Now, if you met him before he had written those books, what would you have called him? 
a killer, a murderer. You would have interpreted him out of his past. You would have defined him out of what he did. And we do that today with people. Now one of the things that's dangerous about defining people from their past is that you cancel their future. Some people are so trapped by their past that others won't allow them to live their future. But I love what Jesus did to this man. Jesus looked past what he did and talked about what he could do. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 is an interesting scripture written by the same serial killer. And here's what he says. Brethren, I count not, nor do I consider myself to have achieved what I am supposed to. I haven't taken hold of what I really want to do. Why? He said, but this one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind. Let me tell you something. If you're going to be successful in life, you're going to have to do this one thing. And what is that? Forget what's behind. Only a minute percentage of the 8 billion people on this planet will experience a significant portion of their true potential. Are you a candidate for contributing to the wealth of the cemetery? Ask yourself the following questions. Who am I? Why am I here? How much potential do I have? What am I capable of doing? By what criteria should I measure my ability? Who sets the standards? By what process can I maximize my ability? By what process can I maximize my ability? What are my limitations? Within the answers to these questions lies the key to a fulfill, effective life. One of the greatest tragedies in life is to watch potential die untapped. Many potentially great men and women never realize their potential because they do not understand the nature and concept of the potential principle. As God has revealed to me the nature of potential, I have received a burden to teach others what I have learned. There's a wealth of potential in you. My purpose is to help you understand that potential and get it out. You must decide if you are going to rob the world or bless it with the rich, valuable, potent, untapped resources locked away within you.